Today at Trinity Presbyterian Church. If you are newer to our church family or here for the first time, welcome. We are delighted that you're joining us in worship on this All Saints Day. Today is indeed the High Holy Day of All Saints Day um, and All Saints Sunday, not just in the Presbyterian Church, but something that churches all over the world are celebrating as we remember the everyday saints of earth on our lot in our lives and those saints who now live in the church triumphant. You will see the names of our beloved congregation members who now are in the church triumphant in your bulletin. And perhaps sometime in this service, say a little prayer of thanks for their life. Please note all the important announcements in the bulletin. Today, we are celebrating that Ida May is 90 years young. Let's hear it for Ida May. Happy birthday. And if you were part of her family, give us a little wave. I want to see. There's a ton of you. Yes. Awesome. Anytime you want to come to worship and move our attendance numbers up, we would love that. So... Thanks to Ida May's family. Happy birthday, Ida May. That's great. <laughs> Please note um, that the offertory is incorrect in your bulletin. Jim Sankey and I got our wires crossed. Jim will be sharing the offertory for us today. Glenn Buchanan will be blessing us another day with his gifts. 
If you receive email, you might have seen that the church, we will lock our sanctuary doors at 11.05 on Sunday mornings. So if you like to come to church late, you're probably not even in the sanctuary yet to hear this announcement. Um, so we, please come to church on time. Um, this is not something we want to do necessarily. Um, we want to be a welcoming church, and we're going to continue to strive to be a welcoming church. Um, but this is just the times we live in, and it's tough. So if you are coming late to church, just stand outside one of the doors, and um, our camera and an usher will see you on camera, and you will hear the door beep, if, assuming they recognize you, and they will let you in. So if not, if they don't recognize you, Two ushers will come to that door and say hello and welcome to you and then let you in. So please come to church if you're running late. We can still let you in. Um, we're also trying to be a church that balances a warm welcome with safety. And you will hear more about that this um, in the coming weeks. We want to communicate clearly to you. Um, some of you have asked, what do you do if you have a key? If you have an actual church key, that will still work and you can use it. So you can continue to let yourself in that way. Um, I said to someone yesterday, I said, well, I follow a Jesus who in the Bible can get through rooms with locked doors. And so I am convinced that our locked doors won't keep Jesus from doing amazing things in the life of our church. And so thanks for um, being a part of that with Trinity Presbyterian. We have a few minutes for ministry. First, from church life, I think, Advent's on the way. That's exciting. Yes. That's exciting. Yes. Amongst other things, many other things. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, I see that leaf raking is coming up right after me, but I just want to say that this is also the stay in shape church. Um, very important uh, that we have some help for getting ready to decorate the church. And that is uh, coming up the weekend after Thanksgiving. So once you stuff your turkey and roast your turkey and eat your turkey and sleep after your turkey, on Saturday morning about 10 o'clock, uh, if you have a few uh, half hours to share with us, come in and help us pull all of the decorations out from under the steps down in the oasis room and we'll bring most of them upstairs into tate hall and get them organized and uh, i'll bring donuts if you come <laughs> if you come you can have two <laughs> um, and then on the 25th after the service at noon we'll be serving pizza for those who wish to stay and help us decorate our sanctuary and our whole church actually uh, for the christmas season so it'll be beautiful all through Advent, and we'll be awaiting the baby Jesus. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, sign up. It's important for us to know how much pizza we need. So there are uh, two places that you could sign up if you're willing to help with us uh, that day. One is out right by the main doors there on the table where the greeters have their pins. And the other is down in Tate Hall on an easel. So just uh, sign up either place and we'll collate everything and uh, hopefully get enough pizza for that day. So we would really appreciate your help. And it always comes out beautifully and people um, do a really good job. Um, just one other thing I'd like to mention, and that is to, I don't have enough postcards to send to everyone, save the date. Okay, December 8th, we are going to celebrate an all-church Trinity Christmas here. That's a Saturday, and it will start about 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and for a couple of hours, we'll have a choice of uh, a couple or three different workshops, if you would like to choose one that, or two that you would like to attend, on different things that we can do to get ready for Christmas. Uh, there'll be one for the children as well. Uh, later, about oh, quarter to six, six o'clock, however long it takes us to clean up our messes, uh, we're going to have a soup and salad. And then after that, we're going to go caroling, and we will have a bus for that. 
what I would ask you to do is just to keep the date in mind, but also keep in mind if you know someone that you think would enjoy having carolers come to their door and uh, do some Christmas music for them, please let us know. Um, you can call me, write me a note, put a note in the collection plate, whatever you want to do. It's not till December 8th, so we have some time. I think that's everything, pretty much. Okay. So uh, any questions, please see me or one of the other members of Church Life Committee, and uh, we'll try to answer them for you. Thanks so much for everything you do to make Christmas special for not only our Trinity family, but for our neighbors and friends and uh, other people who come to enjoy our services. Thanks. Thank you, Carla, for leading the charge. And now we have a minute for ministry about leaf raking. Come on up, Cindy. Cindy Rosser, as she's walking, is modeling for you the amazing Be the Change t-shirt of Trinity Presbyterian Church. If you are interested in getting one of these t-shirts, talk to Cindy or a deacon, and they'll help you with that. Okay, I'm here to talk about leaves, the raking of leaves to be specific. Yesterday, we had an opportunity to participate in an activity to benefit world hunger. Next week, on Saturday the 10th, not the 17th, on the 10th, we are going to gather again, and we, this time we have an opportunity to do something for our community. So, what we want to do is to have you come and when I say you, I don't just mean the adults. This is a great activity for children to get involved in, to learn to help as well. And they surely can do it. After yesterday, we can see that they surely can help. But it's also for some other people. You might be saying, well, I'm not in real good shape. I'm not as young as I used to be. I don't think I can keep up with these people and all the leaf raking. Well, I'm here to tell you that's me. And if I can come and be there, at least for a little while, and do what you can, that's all we ask and it's more than enough. So, I am challenging you to meet here on next Saturday at 1215, where we will go out into the community and help those who have <coughs> let's say a challenge with the leaves. And we should be done around 3.30. So I, lo I look forward to seeing all of you there. Thank you. Thanks, Cindy. The announcement in your bulletin is incorrect. It is next Saturday, the 10th. We thought it was gonna rain on the 10th, but now it's looking better. So next Saturday, the 10th. After we have shared some of these joys and concerns of our church family, let us continue to worship God.
join me in the call to worship. We remember, O oh God, the countless saints of history who have blazed a trail of courage through time. We remember, O oh God, the tender touch of loved ones, the example of heroes, the healing words of comforters, the remarkable acts of fearless ones. We remember, O oh God, the gentle strength of grandparents, the loyalty of friends, the kindness of strangers, the joy of children, the sacrifice of parents. We remember, O oh God, the supreme love of Jesus, the blessing of his spirit, the reminder of his words, the sharing of his suffering, the glory of his resurrection, shown forth in the lives of his disciples, young and old, dead and living, articulate and silent, strange and familiar, brilliant and ordinary. We remember in every time and place the saints of God who have shown us the Lord. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us worship God with joy. Please rise and join us in our opening hymn, The Lion and the Lamb. <laughs> Hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord? 
You may be seated. Please join with me in our prayer of confession. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up men and women to live and die in faith. We confess that sometimes we are indifferent to your will. You call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow in your way that join with those from ages past who have served you with faith, hope, and love. We may join the great cloud of witnesses that sing, pray, and serve to the glory of your name, both here on earth and in the heavens above. Amen. The Bible says that today we get to start again, that everyone who lives in Christ Jesus, we are a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come, not just last Sunday, but this Sunday too and every day of our life. So hear the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are again forgiven. Thanks be to God. In the tradition of those who have gone before us, let us say what we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. First scripture reading is 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. 
so they went to, down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and said, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied, but do not speak of it. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took off his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah was, went up to the heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart.
Please join with me in prayer. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for hands lifted in praise, for manicured hands and hands stained with grease or soil, for strong hands and those gnarled with age. We give you thanks for holy hands used as wave offerings across the land. Lord, on this All Saints Day, as we celebrate those who have reached their heavenly home, we remember today all of your children here on earth. And we remember especially those who are in trouble or in need. Lord, we lift up our brothers and sisters of the Jewish faith in Pittsburgh, and we continue to pray for all of those who will worship this weekend of all faiths. Lord, we pray for those who will receive the food bags we packed yesterday in Rise Against Hunger. We ask a blessing on all of those who got the bags last year when they arrived in Nicaragua. And we look forward to discovering who we get to bless in the world this year. Lord, we lift to you today those who are recovering from a medical procedure and those who are facing one. We ask a blessing on Nathan Crooks and his knee on Tuesday and pray for his doctors and nurses. Lord, we remember the people who live in war-torn places of this earth. We pray for families in need in our own community and around the world. We ask a blessing on the children who will receive backpacks from Trinity again this week with food. Lord, we remember those in prison, those who work in prisons and their families. We pray for victims of violent crime. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for hard-working saints. And we give you thanks for the lives of those in our Trinity family who are now in the church triumphant. We give you thanks for Suzanne and for Helen, for Jesse and Bonnie. We give you thanks for Delos and Jean and Donald and Lillian. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for the hardworking saints, whether hard-hatted or steel-booted, head-ragged or minivan-driving, blue-collared or three-piece suited. We give you thanks for the saints of this world and this congregation whose callings are stressful or filled with difficulty or grief, that you would bless them and make their burdens light. Lord, thank you for the saints of this congregation, the saints in our life, and the saints of this world. They left their mark on the earth for you and for us and for our children to come. We thank you for all the saints who will get out and vote this Tuesday. We thank you for our democracy and those who fought or continue to fight to protect it. We thank you, God, for the tremendous sacrifices made by all of those who have gone before us. Bless the memories of your saints, O oh God, May we learn how to walk wisely from their examples of faith and dedication and worship and love. We pray all of this using the words that the Lion of Judah taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we want to invite Bill McKnight forward. He is our stewardship chair, and he is kicking off stewardship season for us this morning. Happy birthday, Ida Mae. Your, your life has been such a blessing to this congregation. Well, good morning. I imagine that most of us have a 
a place that we go to at a particular time when financial matters need attention. The church also has a place each Sunday where we go to in our worship service and a time when financial matters are rightfully given due thought and planning. So welcome to the stewardship season. We all struggle at times with what is the proper amount to give, not only to charitable solicitations, but to our church's ministry. One such struggle we may have is, should we give based on our gross income or our net income? You know, after all those taxes and other withholdings? Well, that depends. Do you want a gross blessing or a net blessing? <laughs> I recall back in the late 70s and early 80s, there was an investment advisory firm by the name of E.F. Hutton. Their TV advertising always took you to a crowded room full of people engaged in conversations, presumably about what were the latest investment tips. The narrator would come into view and he would say something like, there are lots of people and firms out there who are willing to offer investment advice. But when E.F. Hutton talks, and the room would abruptly go dead silent, and everybody would start leaning their heads towards the narrator and cupping their ears, and the narrator would finish with, when E.F. Hutton talks, people listen. I do not profess to be the E.F. Hutton of financial stewardship. But for a moment, listen to these two suggestions I offer. Give more than you did last year and try to make the largest portion of your overall giving to Trinity's ministry. To help you with a suggested level of giving, this table that Bob is about to show us will also be on the flip side of your pledge card. The verse for this year's stewardship theme is from the first sentence of Mark 6.38. Give, and it will be given unto you. I want you to listen to the rest of Mark 6. Feel the energy of this verse as Jesus speaks. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. You will be receiving your stewardship letter this week with a pledge card enclosed. So take action. Return your pledge card with your best gift. God is amazingly generous to the generous even to the fullest, ex fullest extent of a gross blessing. Thank you, Bill. I think we know that verse well from a children's message that Lorraine shared with us involving sunflower seeds. So a great verse for our church to focus on. Let us continue to worship God as Bill is encouraging us to do through giving.
for the opportunity to serve you, O oh God, by making soup and dumplings, by giving financially to the life and ministry of this church, by raking leaves and packing bags of food for people around the world, we give you thanks. Bless our time, energy, and financial gifts that they might be used for your kingdom here on earth. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. you can just pop that on there. Thanks. You can be seated. At this time, we invite the children forward for the children's message. guys how's it going so there's a holiday that is coming up and it's like not about turkey come on up hey guys come on in we're so excited you're here today thanks for being here yeah hey there's a holiday that's coming up it's, it's not about turkey, it's about presents. What holiday is that? Just yell it out. Christmas. Christmas. You know, we are like less than two months away from Christmas. And so I am busy already working on my gift list um, for people trying to figure out what I'm going to get them for Christmas because, you know, Christmas is coming. So um, Rocky this year would like some more shirts and pants for work because he's a busy working guy. And my dad has like 50 flannel shirts, but he could always use one more. So I'm going to get him like a flannel shirt. Um, now, what about Jesus? Jesus is on my list this Christmas. What might Jesus want for Christmas? And I will tell you there's no right answer, so we'll take answers. Love. Love. That's a great one, Zach. What else would Jesus want for Christmas? Kindness. Kindness, Alyssa. Oh my goodness, you guys are like rocking it. What else, Zach? Joy. Joy. That's a great one. Sylvan? No arguing. No arguing. Oh, you guys know. You know what Jesus wants for Christmas. You are so right. So the Bible says, not just in like the New Testament with Jesus, but in the Old Testament too. Okay, are you watching my eyeballs right here? Okay, so the Bible says that Jesus tells us that like he doesn't want a bike for Christmas or like a board game or like a PS video game thing, Xbox. Jesus wants us to do kind things for other people. And that involves love and kindness and joy and no arguing. And in fact, in the Bible, Jesus says, okay, are you looking at me? Looking at me? Okay, look at me. Awesome. In the Bible, Jesus says that if you give somebody a cup of water, it's like you're giving it to Jesus. If you give someone a blanket or a backpack full of food, it's like you're giving it to Jesus. If you packed food yesterday, raise your hand if you helped us pack food for some people. We'll talk about that next week too. Yep, good job. It's like you were doing it for Jesus. So what Jesus wants for us for, for Christmas is joy and kindness and love and no arguing and helping others and gifts for the angel tree and supporting that pat, compassion kid we support. Jesus doesn't want toys or bicycles. Jesus wants us to do kind things for others. And when we do that, it's like giving Jesus a Christmas gift. So let's pray. God, we want like bicycles and toys and big buckets of slime for Christmas. You just want love, joy. Kindness and the nice things we do for others, like no arguing. When we do those things, it's like giving you a Christmas gift. So may we be big gift givers for Jesus this Christmas and do lots of kind things. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks, guys. You may be seated. You may stay seated for our next hymn.
Our scripture passage today, I'm going to continue on the story of Elijah and Elisha, where Marsha left off. The chariot has come down and carried Elijah home. And so listen as the story continues in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 13 to 18. Listen for the word of the Lord. He, that's Elisha, picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water parted over to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and they bowed to the ground before him. They said to him, see now, we have 50 strong men among your servants. Please let them go back and seek your master. It may be that the spirit of the Lord has caught him up and throw him, thrown him down on some mountain or into some valley. He responded, no, do not send them. But when they urged him until he was ashamed, he said, send them. So they sent 50 men who searched for three days, but did not find him. When they came back to him, that's Elisha, he had remained at Jericho. He said to them, did I not say to you, do not go? Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask For eyes to see and ears to hear. Your will and your way for us today. It's in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior we pray. Amen. The people that we love are never far away. This spring, Rocky and I were working at our Fixer Upper farm. It was a romantic Friday night date involving yard work. And we were taking all of this old wood and we were piling it into our non-four-wheel drive pickup truck. And we were driving it to the pasture field burn pile in the back of the property. So we load all the wood up and the truck gets stuck. Like stuck like eight inches deep in the mud. And I was so sure that the ground was dry enough to do this, yet it was not. So we ended up spending like the last hour of daylight trying to get the truck unstuck and we like threw gravel and sand down and we're like digging it out and we tried throwing down old barn boards and you know we're like screaming at it and pushing it and nothing is working. And so basically now it's dark and we just have to head inside. And so to add insult to marriage injury, like as we sit on the couch that night, all we can see out of our huge living room window is this truck like mocking us in the field. And we're like, it's never going to come out. It's going to be stuck there forever. It was like one of those pieces of like big metal public art that towns buy that they think is like a really great idea for like a week and then you regret it for decades after, right? So there it was just mocking us. But an interesting thing happened that afternoon. As I'm going to the driveway to get more gravel to try to get the truck unstuck, I can hear my grandfather laughing hysterically at this entire situation. My grandpa Bill had lived at the farm all of his life, and so he was hooting and hollering as my grandpa's laughter always um, sounded that way. He thought this was hilarious, and his laughter reminded me that I needed to lighten up a little bit. My grandpa passed away when I was a teenager, but I'm absolutely sure that in that moment and in his laughter, he was there. Rocky and I live in the farmhouse at the family farm. It's the same house. It's a renovated floor plan. And so one day this summer, I am making a classic Western Pennsylvania jello salad. (laughs) Salad, not. Um, And it's got graham cracker crust. So I got my graham crackers in a Ziploc bag and I'm going and I'm getting out the rolling pin. As I'm getting out the rolling pin, I catch out of the corner of my eye my grandmother in what would have been her kitchen. And she's got her rolling pin and she's crushing her graham crackers too. 
Now, I could have been remembering just a childhood memory, but I wasn't like missing grandma that day, and I wasn't wanting to see her. She just showed up in her kitchen, ready to make some jello salad. I share these stories with you today, not because I believe in ghosts, like Jacob Marley haunted spirits that wander the earth from Dickens' Christmas Carol. Yeah, no, I actually don't theologically believe in ghosts. I share these stories with you because I think you might have had some of these experiences too. And on All Saints Day, in the life of the Christian church, this is a day where we say, yeah, it is completely faithful in the Christian faith and in our Reformed Presbyterian heritage to have experiences like this. In fact, we say on All Saints Day that the boundaries between heaven and earth are far more permeable in this life than we often admit. And so sometimes we have these experiences that the people that we love are never far away. And we don't share them with one another in a church because we don't want people to think we're weird or crazy. And All Saints Day reminds us it's faithful. It's faithful and appropriate to talk about these things. You see, in the Old and New Testaments, it's pretty clear. Heaven wants to come be with us. Like, that's a central idea in the story of salvation. Certainly, in the New Testament, in Jesus Christ, heaven came to be with us in the person of Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. But in the Old Testament, too, back in Old Testament days, we see heaven wants to come be with us. And so we see it in our story this morning with Elisha and Elijah. So Elisha and Elijah are hanging out. Elijah with a J is Elisha with an S, his mentor. So they're hanging out. And they know it's time to say goodbye. And so as they're saying their sweet goodbyes, heaven comes to earth. A chariot of fire with horses of fire gallops down and like runs in between them. And heaven gathers up sweet old Elijah and lifts him up to heaven in what is described as a whirlwind. Heaven comes to earth, and Elisha gets to see it all. But the crazy thing about this story is all the other people of God missed it. They missed the moment heaven came to earth. And this is where our story takes a really strange turn. And so after Elijah's taken up to heaven in this great whirlwind. All the other company of prophets, like Elisha's co-workers, come up to Elisha, the budding new prophet, and they're like, hey, where's Elijah? And he's like, seriously, like you didn't see the whole, you know. And they're like, where, where is he? And he's also wearing the mantle. He's wearing his predecessor's prophetic superhero costume. He's wearing the getup. In comic book language, it's like Odin's hammer has already been passed to Thor. They should have seen him in the outfit and realized, oh, we've had a transparent, like, um, authority has been transferred over here to the new prophet. But no, they, they just miss the whole thing. They miss it. And so they're like, where is Elijah? And Elijah's like, seriously? And they're like, yeah. In fact, we, how did you part the water of the Jordan? Right? That shows authority too, like Moses, like Elijah. Elisha can now part water. They're like, how did you do that? But wait, where is he? And they're like, we should send out a search team. We're going to send out 50 men to go search for Elijah to try to figure out where he went. Key idea here, the people of God, like the prophets, the ones who went to worship more than one Sunday a month, like the godly people, they missed it. They missed the moment when heaven stopped by. And so Elisha's story reminds us today that we have to pray to be people who have eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts open to these amazing moments when heaven comes down to be with us. When the things of heaven come to be with us, when the people we love who are in heaven come to be with us, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes to sit with us in moments each day, we are called to be the people who see it. And why do we miss it sometimes? I don't know. Maybe we're too busy staring at our cell phones. Maybe we don't miss these thin places, as the Celtic calls them. Perhaps 
as the Celtic people saw, we see them too. We see these heavenly moments when heaven comes down to visit us. But we don't talk about them at church because we don't want to be new age hippies or something. And so again, this is a reminder. This is central to the story of salvation. In the Old and New Testaments, heaven comes to be with us. The things of heaven, the people of heaven, the God of heaven desires to be with us. And it's totally appropriate to share these encouraging stories with one another. We're headed into Advent. My number one goal of the Advent season is to teach our children to watch and wait for the things of heaven. To come and be among them. That's what Advent is all about. Now certainly Christmas Eve, we celebrate the first Christmas Eve, right? When heaven came to be with us in Jesus Christ. But the season of Advent is all also about watching and waiting for all the times heaven comes to be with us. The people of heaven and the things of heaven and the God of heaven. And we look forward to the second coming of Christ. That's a huge part of Advent, not just waiting for Christmas and remembering what happened 2,000 years ago, but looking forward to the second coming of heaven among us and telling the children we live in between those two moments. And you're to watch and wait for all the things of heaven that come whooshing in and out of your life in every day and really cool church moments too. So I wonder, are you and I living like there is this big boundary between heaven and earth in our lives? Are we such scientific enlightenment thinkers that there's this huge boundary between heaven and earth that doesn't actually exist biblically or theologically? Or are some of us today stuck with the poet Dante in the Middle Ages? And we're convinced that there are impenetrable levels of eternity and life's like a board game and you just hope you land in the right one at the end of all of it. Because that's not biblical or a good Presbyterian theology either. Think about Jacob and Jacob's ladder in Genesis chapter 3. Heaven and earth, there's a ladder between heaven and earth. These boundaries are far more permeable than we often think. And in his vision, the angels of God are ascending and descending. But what doesn't happen in Jacob's vision? Jacob doesn't earn his vision. He does nothing to get it. And Jacob never climbs the ladder. Heaven comes to him. And so, in the next few weeks... May you, out of the corner of your eye or deep in your heart, have a moment where something or someone from heaven stops by for a visit. If only for a moment, until we all meet again. Let us pray. God, we are a people who know grief. We are a people of sweet memories. We are a people who believes theologically that heaven comes to be with us all the time in Jesus Christ. May we also realize that there is a communion of saints from heaven and a communion of saints on earth. And the two intermingle all the time. So may we be people with eyes to see and ears to hear when someone from heaven stops by. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing with us. <laughs>
things of eternity are never far from us. May we have eyes to see when they stop by. Go out into this world and go in peace and have courage. Return no one evil for evil, but strengthen the faint-hearted and support the weak. Care for those who suffer. Love and serve the Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and let all God's people say, Alleluia. Amen. Amen.